What's going on YouTube? Bryce Crispin 94 here, bringing you another miniature painting video. This time we are going to be doing a how to paint on a half elf druid. Now this is not just any half elf druid. This is actually my player's own miniature. This is a Denestra Tilly. Uh, you may recognize her if you've been with the channel for a little bit and checked out the original uh, just miniature painting videos before we started doing the how to paint. Um, so this is the original figure here. Got some nice blue on my hands already. I haven't even started painting, so that's fun. Um, but here she is in all of her glory. But I've decided that they hit level five, so they are in need of a little bit of an update, especially since, as you can see, Denestra now has a wonderful staff. This is actually um, a staff of power so gives her the shield spell and mage armor i believe uh so that comes in useful i also decided to change up the base um to more of a oh dog is a bargain one sec sorry about that um but yeah i decided to change up the base to this more um bamboo look because i did the fake grass the last time didn't like it ended up adding that grass and honestly i haven't actually been a fan so I went with this cool bamboo look. We're just gonna, you'll see. <laughs> I won't spoil. Um, so uh, I also, this just a, a deep Roth miniature that I, I printed and painted that was just kind of sitting here because she turned into a deep Roth the other day and I didn't actually have a miniature for it. So now we do, but yeah. Um, for those of you who haven't seen the first video, Nestor Tilly is one of my players characters in our home game uh she's a half elf druid they just hit level five she is circle of the shepherd which is actually a really cool circle um you get access to a lot of awesome things like uh are they totems i think they're spirit totems like spirit animals uh there's a bear which i think provides what does the bear do the bear gives you temporary health um the uh, unicorn does something with healing. I think it's the most broken, but also kind of the most confusing. And the hawk allows her to, which is, she uses that a lot, uh, allows her to grant advantage uh, with her reaction, which helps our rogue character out a lot, because then our rogue has advantage, so our rogue can use sneak attack. Uh, a lot of cool combinations you can do with this uh, outside of just wild shaping into a bear and, you know, bashing things. Though she has started to use the wild shape feature quite a bit. Um, and because of my uh, own, mm, I was about to say malpractice, but that's not the right word. But because of my own uh, not reading, I completely spaced out that uh, wild shape is not a bonus action unless you're circle of the moon. Um, so we had to kind of throw that in there a little bit. But yeah, uh, it's been a great time, so very excited to bring an updated figure and very excited to teach you guys how to paint it. So, with chit chat, let's get to painting. All right, for our first step with the Nestra, or our half elf druid, we're going to take our opal skin and amber skin, and we're going to add two drops of amber skin and one drop of opal skin, and just do all the fleshy areas her arms, her face, and her chest. Um, this will probably take two to three coats as you thin, eh, thin it right. Now we're going to move on to the dark pants. For the dark pants, we're going to use Army Painter's Deep Blue and Army Painter's Matte Black. And it'll be a three to one. Three blue, th one black. And this will be for our pants for right now. We'll use this color a little later on as well. So make enough that you'll have extra. Thank you. 
Then we're going to use just the straight deep blue, not the deep blue and black mixture, but just deep blue by itself. And we're just going to do the skirt with it. So the front, the back, and then the ins and outs of the skirt. We'll be using deep blue again in another step later on. So if you get a little too much out this time, that's okay, because you'll probably use it again very shortly. Now we're bouncing back to our deep blue and black mixture and we're going to do the belt around her waist, her actual belt this time, and then the sheath that her knife it, eh, that her knife is in. Apologies, can't talk this morning. Now it's speed paint time. We're going to take our grim black speed paint and we're just going to coat her hair in it. Remember, speed paint works best when going from top to bottom. So this is going to give just in my opinion, the best version of black hair that I can do. <laughs> Moving on to Army Painter D&D line Gelatinous Blue or Gorgonhide on the regular line. We're going to use this color to do all of her boots, then her shirt. So that's just the the top part of her shirt and then like underneath the sash, not the actual sash part. And then also the bottoms of the gauntlet. The gauntlets will be done, finished at a later step, but the bottom is cloth and that is the same color as her shirt and boots. Jumping back to the deep blue, straight deep blue, not the mixture, we're going to just do the sash around her waist. Sash or rope, not really sure which it is. 
but that's what we're doing with the deep blue. Now it's time for the, one of the most tedious parts of this model, and that's the shield brown from Reaper uh, paints. And we're just doing the inside of the shield. So just all the little intricate parts of the shield from the front. Once you get that handled, then we'll flip it around and we'll do the more prominent, 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 prominent parts of the shield and the brown as well. Breaking out the metallics on this step, we're going to take our Vallejo gunmetal, yeah, well, I guess it's just gunmetal, and we're going to do her bands that are on her biceps, as well as the um, circlet, I believe is what it's called, on the top of her head, her kind of crown. I guess you could also call it a crown. Um, and then I believe, oh, and then the claws. There's little tiny claws on her gauntlet. So we're gonna do those as well. We'll be headed back to the shield for this step. And we're gonna be taking Reaper's Driftwood Brown and mixing it with a little bit of Vallejo Dead White. I did about five drops of the Driftwood Brown to one drop of the Dead Light, Dead White. This really lightens up that brown and gives it this kind of nice, really light wood look on the shield. Um, but we're going to be doing the non-intricate parts. So the actual prominent parts on the front of the shield in this step, and then just the edges of the shield on the backside. Uh, this step can be very frustrating. It took me a while. I did a lot of off-camera fixes, and I still don't think I have it super quick step here. We're just going to jump back to our gelatinous blue, our Gorgon hide, and do the handle of the knife. More metallics. We're gonna take Army Painter's Elven Armor, mix it with a little black. So I did about a three to one um, ratio for this. And that's when we're gonna hit up our gauntlet. It's the majority of the gauntlet, as well as a little bit of the silver bands on her um, biceps, just the very outsides in that. Then we're also gonna head down to the boots and we're gonna do the V pattern on her boots in this color. Then we're going to hit her belt buckle and the gem she has on her circlet.
Next up, grab your Vallejo Stonewall Gray or any light gray you have. And we're going to be doing the big stone on the front of her shield as well as the little stone. Flip that shield around and there's four more stones, three at the bottom and one at the top. Once you've gotten that done, you can do the stone on the handle of the knife and then the knife blade itself as it is a stone knife because typically druids don't use metal weapons. This will be our final step for the shield and we're just going to take our army painter rigid D, D rigid leather also known as never mind this one is unique to the army painter D, &D line. Uh, I love this color by the way um, and we're just going to do the leather straps on the back of her shield in this. Now don't worry I didn't forget about the staff we're going to hit that right now. So we're going to grab our Merfolk Turquoise or Royal Cloak in the actual Army Painter line. And we're going to do the entire staff. Now, since this is a pretty simple base with just the bamboo and we dry brushed it, we're just going to grab Army Painter Speed Paint Orc Skin and cover the base in that, and that's going to give us a nice looking bamboo base that's not too distracting from the figure, but also gives it a little bit of color. Get ready to break out your dry brush for this one, and we're going to take our Army Painter Purple Worm from the D&D line. Oh, it is another unique to the D&D line, did not realize that. But anyway, we're gonna squirt that a little bit in our dry palette and we're gonna take our dry brush, get it all nice and on there. And we're just going to do where the staff starts to kind of diamond up, as I'm gonna call it, where you know it gets thick at the end. And we just wanna get some nice amount of purple on there, but make sure that turquoise is still showing. Time for the final step of this project and we're gonna be grabbing Vallejo dark green and we're just gonna do the rim of the figure. I usually like to paint my character figures rims a different color just to kind of reflect the character and I know there's really no green on her besides the base but for some reason green is what stuck with Danny here. All right we are finished with our half elf druid aka Denestra Tilly my player character well not my player character one of my players characters from my IRL game um the Hero Forge model, if you guys wanted to paint along, and the link is down below uh, that you guys can get the model yourself and print it up. Um, so there's that. But before I reveal our finished product, if you guys haven't already, hit that thumbs up button to let me know you like the video. Leave a comment to let me know how I'm doing. Subscribe if you're not already, because that's how you see all these painting videos. All right, enough jibber jabber out of me. Let's show off the fig. Here she is. Nice little cat hair sticking on. Um, now, two things I did do off camera that I do want to suggest is take some nice gloss varnish and do the staff. You'll see it gives it a very, very nice shiny look. I also am going to take a matte varnish over the whole figure, and that will hopefully take care of that Vallejo green shine down there. I did not realize it was going to dry that shiny. Um, another thing I did off camera I painted the knife blade because uh, as I was going through rewatching my steps, I'm like, I tell you guys to paint the knife and then I don't paint the knife. So that's on me. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> I don't know how I completely missed. It. I think it's just about every angle except for like right there. You can't see the knife blade. So any like picture angle that I was like looking at the knife blade is just hidden. You, know, you got the straight shield. You've got, you know, from the front, that angle. Yeah, really only the back. And then I'm not paying attention to the blade. So that's my bad. But yeah, um, super fun figure to paint. Uh, I love that I was able to model it, create it, print it. And I think she's going to be super happy when I put this on the field. Our next session when we resume our part two of our campaign. Uh, so thanks for stopping by. Catch y'all later. Peace.